My first trip to Bristol, I was about nine years old, but I went on rollerblades and I broke my arm. I didn't go back for like a year and then I started skateboarding. So yeah, about 10 years been skating Bristol for quite a wee while now. I started skating there like consistently, I think in like September 2001. It's about 12 years ago now, it's quite a long time. Probably started coming here when I was like 13 or something, so seven years ago. I first skated in 1988 um, and we came through from Glasgow in a van, in the back of someone's van. So I would have been 13, so. Um, and at that point it was pretty mind-blowing because having grown up in Glasgow there wasn't any one central spot, so everyone was quite spread out and to find a place that was the skaters were all the time and they were allowed to be there was pretty amazing, so it kind of blew our minds a wee bit then. Um, first time I uh, was probably about 1994 and I think I got the bus through with some friends and just came here and skated all day and it was just really liked it. It was a lot different from the skate park and yeah, it started coming through from probably late 94, early 95 onwards. I first knew about Bristol Square probably by the time I was 15, uh, 39 now so 24 years ago if my sums are right. I probably knew of Bristol Square almost a quarter of a century ago. Um, didn't start skating it properly till I got a driving license. 20, 21 years old by the time I actually started going and skating the place. Met a lot of good people, made good friends, moved into Edinburgh, skated it every day. I was maybe last year of primary school, so primary seven, so I was about 11, 11, 10. And I got sent to Bristol by my mother with like a helmet and full pads on, on my own. I went up and it was like a Saturday, it was like the busiest day. And it was like easy, like no exaggeration, like 60 people skating, like all like guys, like 15 upwards. So all like the big, the bigger boys or whatever you want to call them, skating like really, really loud, lots of noise, people shouting, drinking. And I was just like, no. I remember walking to the grass market and just sitting in the grass market with my skateboard and my helmet, just being like, not ready for this yet. I think the the public reaction, you know, like I think when it when it first started being used as a skate a skateboarding space, it was it was more of a kind of sort of cultural hub there was like breakers i remember being a little kid being taken there and just sitting around and seeing break dancers with mats out and like you know sort of crusties with bongo drums and just whatever like lo quite a wide mix it wasn't just skateboarders so i think in that respect uh you know people embraced it as a as a cool open space yeah you get some grief from people uh like from just from skating the square. Uh, I remember this one woman came up from the university building and she she was like, yeah, she just wasn't having any of it. She she um, she was asking us to move away, saying that skateboarding should stop there, that it shouldn't happen. I, th I think these people just don't realise like what a creative thing it is. I think people got used to it over time and now it's like Love Park or whatever. I think people get like used to the idea that that's kind of, it becomes like a skate park pretty much, you know? because they get used like that all the time, you know? And they can only really fight it for so long. But no one's ever liked it, man. 90% um, of the public would uh, walk through with the an eyelid and they, you'd maybe knock the occasional one's ankle with your board if it went wrong, but ah, I didn't see much problems going on. Like, if people were not the they walked around to Bristol Square. That's the beauty of Bristol Square. You can avoid it if you want to avoid it. Do you know what I mean? I think initially it was fine and I think skating got a bit more progressive so different things happened and tricks meant a little bit more damage, a bit more variety, things got bigger, it wasn't just kids on boards, people were getting a bit older so reactions changed a bit, I think, I think people appreciated they saw it as vandalism and then I think the council, or the university rather, had a crack at kind of putting signs up stopping it happening because it's technically their land even though it's a right of way and there was loads of talk about it being gravelled or grassed over or kind of fences pop around it, none of which ever happens, but yeah, I think perceptions changed a bit um, and then it kind of died off again and it was fine and then I think um, the kind of Tony Hawk boom came and everyone kind of actually enjoyed having the skaters, it was kind of cool, extreme sports were cool, 
the video game, game everyone was playing it. So, um, and since then, it's not really been a big issue. Um, what is interesting is my mother many years ago was at a, a, some kind of dinner somewhere, and she was sitting next to a guy who was an architect. I think he was Czech. We're probably talking early nineties here, um, and just through chatting, got talking about skateboarding and. Bristow Square, and he actually designed Bristow Square for the university way back in the early 80s, and um, apparently he wasn't particularly interested in exactly the design brief he'd been given. It was, he thought it was really boring, it wasn't a great use of the space, it could have been better. Um, and he was overjoyed to hear it actually had some practical purpose for someone, because essentially they might as well have just put benches in the space. They kept the monument that had been there for years and everything else, it was a kind of missed opportunity in his eyes. He wanted to do something a lot better, but he'd been asked to tone it down. So he was kind of pleased that it was a cultural significance, and uh, certainly in skateboarding anyway. Do I think it's different now? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, the kind of, the heyday of Bristol is gone without a doubt. And I think like, I think in the last few years, the, the university were getting less tolerant of skateboarders there. And I think like people using the space were kind of less tolerant of it as well. So, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if that's necessarily the cause of its demise as like a busy skate spot, but certainly a factor. Like, <laughs> um, it's definitely not as popular uh, as it used to be because of the um, the amounts of parks and uh, other uh, facilities that are available to to skateboarding. And um, obviously the park at Stockton, which is really good, so everyone kind of congregates there now. Um, and Bristol has kind of taken its, taken a beating over the last kind of 30 odd years. So the slabs are a little bit uneven, the blocks are rounded, just being kind of thrashed from uh, from skating. Uh, I've never been involved in anything myself, but I've seen yeah several different fights and conflicts over just Usually there's a dog running about who just barks and then people give the junkies a bit of abuse and then they give abuse back and then there might be a wee scrap. I've seen some fights happen. There was a good one in 2005. I've seen people getting hit in the face with skateboards and somebody got bitten actually in the back. Some skateboarder got bitten off a junkie, so that was, that was a strange one. Every time you'd come through, there was a always, if you got there early enough, there was always some like tramps sleeping there or sort of jakey sort of kicking about. But I think the, one well, of the funniest things I saw was uh, like a tramp uh, had like passed out on the block and Brian Jones was skating over him, uh, which was fun. There's always some there. I mean, a lot of the guys were friendly at one point. Um, and recently I think it's gone downhill a bit. I think some of the guys are quite sketchy. And certainly if I, if I had kids going to Bristol, I wouldn't particularly be happy because it's not as busy and some of these guys are pretty dodgy. Um, Colin and I actually got pretty much chased out by a guy last year on the basis that his dog was attacking us, trying to skate, and actually if we didn't leave, his dog would then get taken by the police and destroyed for being dangerous, like it happened to his last dog, which is some kind of twisted logic, so we just called it a day. We were just there for old time's sake, but yeah, it's kind of, it still goes on. I saw a rollerblader break his neck. Uh, that was pretty brutal. There was a Bristol, we used to have Bristol jams every year before there was, um, the E4 cow tent and the main circle of Bristol Square like put like lots of obstacles and there was these two ramps and like I kind of everybody knew that if it was like the sort of skate jam whatever skateboard jam no no like rollerbladers or BMXers would turn up and this kid was being cocky and he was always known for doing like flips and things like that and he just booked it towards this ramp it was two quite large sort of like four foot five foot ramps like that and just flipped and it was like looked like he was going to just like land it like no problem and just landed with his neck right on the next lap ramp brutal like the worst thing I, one of the worst things I've ever seen at Bristol yeah the future of Bristol maybe the university will eventually just like reclaim it there was always rumors about it getting grassed over and all the rest of it but um, I would like to I would like it if it just stayed the way it was it got skated every now and then by people who really appreciate it and that would be fine with me.